Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Golden Ratio Podcast. <laughs> it's been a long time since I've seen you, GR Dad. It's been a long time since you've seen me startled through your <laughs> sudden precipitous beginning. I am Jen, GR Mom, joined as always by GR Dad. Hi. How's it going, GR Dad? Pretty good. Excellent, excellent. The cocktail of the week this week is the Pineapple Express. <laughs> it is mezcal, simple syrup, lime juice, pineapple juice. That must have a deeper meaning because there was a movie called Pineapple Express. Yeah. But I'm sure that was a reference to something. Pineapple Express. Was, was it about a train? I don't know. <laughs> I don't, no, the movie was not about a train. The Pineapple Express also has Averna and Chinar. 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 I like Chinar. A little bit. I do too. I also like the word Chinar. Yeah. It's, it's, it's supposedly artichoke, but I don't think it tastes anything like an artichoke. Artichokes are dumb. Yeah. I don't think we should eat artichokes. Ugh. Like you you peel you pry the meat off the leaves with your teeth. You mm-hmm. scrape you scrape the leaves. What are we in like It is kind of undignified. What are we in in low nutrition times <laughs> where we have to like <laughs> chew leaves? What's <laughs> up with that? And then you I just remember getting through a whole artichoke and then you get the one good piece in the middle, the heart. Yeah. Which is what you get in the can too, right? You can just buy cans. But like, you're just like, I just got to get through 20 more of these damn leaves <laughs> and then I can have a piece of the actual good thing that's in the artichoke. Interesting. I don't know why we ate through all the leaves, but Plus we Plus it's got to. that spike ball, the choke. <sighs> yeah. Well, that, that's not the part of the, the, the dish though. No. I guess you dip it in something. Maybe we dipped it in olive oil or something. You dip the leaves in something. There, yeah, it is served with like sauce. a sauce for the leaves. Yeah. So Not just olive oil. So it's yeah. kind of like a lot of foods where it's just a vehicle for butter. Yeah. <laughs> we eat rocks covered in butter. I mean, I think I have only had the like scrape it off with your teeth artichokes one time in my whole life. It just never appealed to me. And it, I don't love artichoke. It must have been trendy at some point when I was growing up because I remember mm. it, having it as a family a, a few times when huh. I was not as critical, but now thinking back, I'm <laughs> thinking, what a weird thing to eat, like to pretend to be getting food out of this leaf. <laughs> like I don't eat any other leaves. <laughs> well, I guess I eat salad leaves, but that's different. I eat the whole leaf. I don't like just scrape, scrape off a little bit with my teeth. There aren't many foods that we scrape. No, no, no. And it's, uh, yeah, the whole thing's weird. Okay. <laughs> it's kind of like oysters. Oysters, also weird. I don't eat those either. That's gross. You're just pouring raw gloop down your Ugh. throat and it tastes salty. Yuck. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I've, I'm also anti-oysters this week. <laughs> okay. All right. There we go. Uh, it's time for administrative corner. I love administrative corner. I know you do. Um, I have been gone for like two weeks. I, I popped home for a day. In the middle of that, but that's it. I was gone with you for some of the time, so it kind of, like, for me, it doesn't seem quite as bad. No, and it was very nice to have you with me for, like, six of those days. For the dogs, you were gone for two weeks. Yeah, I got to, like, say hi and then come back, and uh, that was it. it I know, was I, gone I, I uh, was cleaning up today, and I noticed that Venkman had made a little li- list of, had, like, made a little line every day, and, like, oh, man. diagonal through every five, and <laughs> she's, like, times, days, Jen hasn't been here. Vink, I'm sorry. I know. Now she's, now she's trying to erase it, but it didn't erase really well. <laughs> I, I was just thinking today as I was flying home that, like, as you know, and go better than anyone, I have dedicated a lot of my adult life to making my home a place of like peace and rest and just interesting <laughs> giving me a weird look I hadn't, well i hadn't thought of this but go ahead but i think this is a thing i've said to you a lot of times where like there's yeah. there's something in the house that's like idgity to me and and i go like listen i gotta take care of this thing because like i really need my house to be, be a place that like i come home to and i can just like completely relax in it yeah and if there's stuff in here that like makes me feel bad like yeah, and I've always worried about being one of those things <laughs> where you're like, get out. Ooh, it's so much more calm in here now. That's not true. I mean, I do like my alone time just fine. Yeah. Um, I'm not a person who like feels bad when I'm home alone. I love being home alone. But uh, uh, you are not one of those things that makes <laughs> me, me feel bad. Lucky me. <laughs> House guests are, which is why we don't ever have them. Lucky me. Um, but 
Yeah, I was just thinking, like, it's so nice that, like, you know, that's not, like, the only thing that you need to have a successful relationship, but it's really nice that, like, you and I are on the same page where, like, we can, like, compromise on things, and the stuff that stresses me out, like, you don't care about, and you're like, that's fine, you just do whatever you want with that. Yeah. And it's really nice that I can come home, and it's just, like, even though there's, like, chaos with the dogs and everything, like, the house is everything here is is really kind of like set up to be like a place that and, and in silver spring too right a place to like relax and just like let everything go like i never am dreading coming home yeah we try to make it cozy that's really nice I just wait there's no butt no where's the big butt no no big butt i thought you were like oh i thought you were looking at feta and zola when you were saying that going <laughs> Huh. <laughs> I'm fine with their chaos. Not quite as relaxing right now since someone's always biting me. <laughs> Though, you know, I will say a thing that does stress me out is the house smelling like pee, um, which it did, though it seemed you seem to have cleaned a lot of that. It doesn't smell like pee now. Well, I stopped peeing in the house. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that was really the problem. I've turned, I figured it out. I, it took me a while <laughs> while you weren't here, but I figured it out. This is why I, I have said many times, <laughs> I'm sure people are going to pull up the receipts on the podcast. Like I'm never getting a puppy because like I hate the rug smelling like pee. And I actually did buy new rugs for the house before I left because it was smelling like pee in here. Turns out vacuuming helps. <laughs> yeah. Did you put any of the miracle, nature's miracle red stuff down. only on new stains <laughs> yeah, new ones. well <laughs> it seems better maybe maybe by tomorrow i'll be smelling it again but that's always a thing no, you'll I get mean, nose fatigue and you won't anymore you know that there have been times that that i've been like the house smells like pee like we need to do something about this immediately because it just absolutely like puts me on edge you have a much better nose than i do i i have pretty intense smelling powers i don't know if this is typical for other couples but you i I mean, I don't think I'm a terrible smeller either. I don't think I you think are. I think I'm pretty cool, but you definitely have a more sensitive nose. I, I, I mean, I think generally. I'm part dog, maybe. I would like to say for certain smells, but no, I, I can't think, think of anything that I would, where I'm more, I can pick it out more. Yeah. I do think everything smells like cat pee outside these days, but then that could actually be true. <laughs> All right, but like you also... Uh, I th I feel like this is like when I make you a cocktail and you're like, ooh, I really nah. like the ginger, and it's like there's no ginger in there. Like, yeah, you just attribute things to other things. I think I just have bad vocabulary. <laughs> Maybe there's a different way to describe the smell besides it smells like cat pee. You use cat pee for a wide range of bad smells that smell like urine from a cat. <laughs> You conflate a lot of bad smells with smelling <laughs> like cat pee, I guess. It's, it's possible, yes. It's definitely possible. Like when our rugs... It's when like they having were having a blind person describe blue, having me describe a certain smell <laughs> is the same thing. So, uh, okay. I just wanted to put that in administrative corner. It's nice that it that it is always very peaceful to come home and I never dread it. And I do try to clean up before you come home also because... It's always so damn clean when I come home from a trip. I'm always dripping in sweat and like <laughs> blisters so from blisters from cleaning. Oh my god! I don't need I don't need you to clean, but you always do. It's so uh, I feel so uh, nice when I can be like, here is a nice clean house for you. It's so nice. I've let it degenerate over the last few days, but now I've vacuumed up all the fourteen pounds of dog fur and <laughs> thirty-two pounds of sticks that have been coming in on everyone's tail, Remy. No. Yeah. But like, I I mean, obviously, like our house is in pretty tidy shape most of the time. But there's times that like it gets a little out of control more often for me. But it's that's not like the configuration of the house. Right. Like sometimes, you know, we've had like a bunch of packages come and there's like stuff on the dining room table. There's like stuff in a lot of places. But that's just because we've like fallen behind on putting stuff away and cleaning up, which is different than like it just lives there like our dining room table is like for storing shit mm, like yeah. it's not right sometimes like we get behind on putting stuff away but it's never just like oh like the dining room table is where we like keep all of our right whatever. no it does the knickknacks the the ideal state and it is reached is that there is nothing on the dining room table except flowers and plants yeah that's true um but it is a yeah i use it as a staging area from like 
you know, packages to ultimate destination or kitchen yeah. to bedroom or kitchen to bathroom. But I think it's nice that like, it's not that everything in here has to be perfect all the time, right? Like I'm, I'm not a freak about this, but just that like our kind of like default state, which we get back to a lot is like stuff is put away and it's like peaceful and relaxed and non-chaotic other than like dog chaos, which is kind of nice. Yes. Oh, that's all. Good. Just, I think it's just really nice. I'm glad to be home. That's nice. To, well, there you go. That's yeah. That really sums it up. You're not sitting here going, God, the hotel is a lot cleaner than this. <laughs> Jeez. No. I mean, it's about as organized in here as it is in hotel rooms. Like, it's it's mm. pretty good in here. F- a lot fewer dogs in a hotel room, typically. That's true. That's true. All right. It's time for dog updates. Let us begin... With the call that I got this morning at like nine from our next door neighbor, not steak neighbor, the neighbors on the other side. <laughs> Which is good because steak neighbor isn't there. Yeah, that'd be real bad if he was calling. <laughs> neighbor Carolina. on the other side calls and says, hi, Jen, I'm at your gate and I have one of your goldens. And I was like, I'm in Maryland. Let me call Ingo. And I called Ingo like five times. And then I texted him. I'm like, it is emergency. Neighbor has a dog. And... I still didn't answer. Ingo didn't answer, so I called the neighbor back and I, to tell him what the code was to our gate so he could just bring the dog in. And uh, he's like, hang on, Ingo just pulled up. So would you like to fill in? Yeah. Tell us what happened. Well, I let everybody out. Well, I don't think I let everybody out. I think I let four of the dogs out. I don't think Venk went out and I don't think Brody went out. Uh, it was kind of had been raining. It was chaotic. There was Lake Queso. Uh, which is our flooded lawn and you know water had been draining and I think I was trying to shepherd everyone upstairs because I don't think they'd had breakfast so I put I can't even remember I think I was trying to get the elevator down which takes about seven minutes (laughs) it's real slow um and I saw Remy go into the water with who Guac, who was in there waiting for someone to throw a ball. And then the elevator came down, and I look around, and I see Guac. And I'm like, where's Feta? Where's uh, Zola? Zola? And they're goofing around somewhere. And then I didn't see Remy. Hmm. And I was like, huh, this is not good at all. So I grab everyone I can, put them in the elevator, and then look again and call for Remy and I whistle and nothing because sometimes he's in the bushes next to the fence and yep. who knows where he sometimes is. Um, I'm like, this is bad. So I drag the kayak into the water and I start paddling around. Uh, don't see him. Mm-hmm. See a bunch of tennis balls, <laughs> the rocks uh, up and down our, our shore. And I'm looking, and I i mean, I just didn't see him at all. So I, all right, I'm like, all right. Well, I, so I took everyone upstairs, left him on the porch, um, got in the car, and just started driving around the neighborhood. Um, didn't find him. Did not clearly. see him. Saw, you know, our neighbor's cat on the street. And I was like, oh, Remy likes to follow <laughs> that cat around. But no Remy. And then I saw a golden retriever it looked a lot like remy and i was like hey remy but it wasn't remy it was a different golden retriever hopefully attended and the oh yeah and the owner was like hi what's up and he's like oh i i know you from that birthday party and um you're like where's my dog and i because i I mean i don't really share things like this but i was like oh the only reason i was bothering your dog is i thought it was my dog (laughs) because he's lost and he's like "Ooh, oh i'm sorry about this uh What's his name? And, you know, and he's like, bring that mic closer to your mouth and go, I'll look for him when I'm out on my bike later. And I said, yeah, he usually goes the other way. Uh, When he when he has escaped, he's gone the other way, not this way, because this is the steak neighbor side. And he probably would have just stayed over there. Um, I said, but yeah, let me know if if there's a roaming around uh, golden. That's Remy. And so I drive back. Um, and as I'm pulling up, there's, there's our neighbor with Remy. Mm -hmm. Uh, and he's like, uh, yeah, he was, he was in my yard and, and he, uh, I think he got up on the rocks, but couldn't get back in. 
and uh he was saying it was like a bad thing and i'm like oh i'm thinking he wanted to get back in to swim further away yes. which would have been bad the neighbor thought well certainly he wanted to get back in and swim back home no i'm like you don't know my dog <laughs> you <laughs> cool well, Ray. yeah he, the neighbor probably would have been like go swim back home and <laughs> remy would have been like swimming to freedom <laughs> yep <laughs> and the neighbor would have been like your house is the other way. And <laughs> Remy would have been like, freedom! <laughs> so it's good that he couldn't get back in the water because, you know, this way he only went one house over uh, and then got out of the water. So I missed him completely with the kayak um, and, you know, didn't obviously didn't need to have the car, but scary. He's been making a habit of escaping lately. Yeah, and then half an hour later, after breakfast, well, an hour later, I had everyone out and i look around and remy's missing again and i'm like god bless freak call the neighbor again or what remy had gone up the stairs and was waiting outside the Ah. front door where no one else was and was just like what's up (laughs) i said i was like remy your timing is terrible now i can't even be mad at you but i'm kind of mad at you anyway the six dogs is too many especially with an escaper like remy for one person to manage he's just very sneaky i now that I am here, Remy will be going out by himself or with an additional supervisor. You can't do that if it's like just you because like everything is real complicated. I can't do six trips and still have a life. No, um, but now there's two of us. so Quote unquote life. <laughs> it's, not, it's not that exciting. My so-called life. It's not that exciting. Uh, so that's Remy. He's a bad, bad dog. He, um, was, he was quite unruffled by the whole experience mm-hmm. he neither felt guilt nor elation he's just like all in a day's work mm-hmm. i did some exploring dick <laughs> um dog update number two guac has a hematoma on his ear we may have mentioned it before we drained it once it's it like came a small back. balloon it's like a water it's not the size of a water balloon but it's it feels kind of like a water balloon in his ear it's not as big as his whole ear flap which sometimes they get um brody had something more like that yeah he had to have surgery for it we've taken guac into the vet a couple times and they've drained it i have drained it partially he does not obviously like me sticking a needle in there and draining it um so i can kind of get it partially drained before he refuses and then he like runs away from me after i drain it and it's very sad dripping blood well, it's kind of like a blood fluid mixture in there. And yeah, there it does make kind of a mess. It's a hematoma, not a hydratoma. <laughs> That's true. Um, so they think because it's not his whole ear flap, that counts as small and that it will eventually resorb. Um, yeah, the, the vet was being conservative and was like, I don't really want to give him surgery yet. Or because it takes months to heal. Put a, a drain in there, which is kind of like, keeping the tap open we tried that last time and it did not work guac was no, miserable and in pain it. And, and it uh, sucked and i also wonder whether that drains both ways and when he goes in the water it'll just fill up you're not allowed water. in the water if you have a drain in well there's the problem there's your problem yes no absolutely no <laughs> going in the water yes that's a that is an instant path to infection <laughs> absolutely well, what's, not what's the point of that then you're supposed to keep him out of the water. Dumb idea back then. Uh, we, wait, you let him in the water with that drain in? Mm-mm. No. Okay. No, the dumb idea was putting the drain in there and having him not go in the water. I mean, he was lucky he kind of rejected the drain after a day. We didn't really have to experience See, that. See, uh, we have such different attitudes about this because my attitude is like, here's a medical thing we're doing to take care of our dog and like we will do it. And you're like, but he can't swim and he loves to swim. Hey, the vet said that too. The vet's on my side on this. Vet's like, we can't really put a drain in there because I know he loves to swim. I'm just saying. I was like, you're my kind of vet, vet, <laughs> <laughs> doctor. Uh, so anyway, hopefully that's going to get better. We'll keep you updated. Uh, Vink went to Miami for chemo this week, I believe with both Feta and Zola in tow. Yeah. Zola I- made some new friends. And goes actively socializing Zola with anyone who wants to pet her. <laughs> yeah, I do. I mean, it do, I think it does. It is good to get her socialized and not afraid of people and not freaked out. Because um, she has been timid before when I've had her out. Um, and I, we don't need her to be fearful. So Vink's lymph nodes are a little bit bigger. And this would have been 
So this is round three of four, and this was drug two of four in the round. Um, this is the one that's given her problems before. So the dose had been reduced every time. Yeah, and so her lymph nodes were a little bigger, which is not what we want. Um, but the vet seems to think that's because we've just reduced that drug so much. So hopefully next round, we're going to try a different drug for that one. Um, so this is like not a great sign that like missing this, like this drug being a little too low for a week means that she starts coming out of remission because it sort of suggests when we're done with the chemo that it's not going to stick, but we'll see. We'll see. She's still in good spirits yep. and plays with other dogs and wants to go swimming and seems to be her her usual Venkian self Indeed. for now. So I'm taking it one day at a time. She's doing a good job. Yeah. And that's pretty much it for dog updates this week. Brody is fine. Um, are you ready for ramblings? I don't care if you're ready. We're going to do them. Okay. I was going to say yes. Okay, good. Um, all right. From friend of the squad, Yasmin. The infamous Chicago rat hole. A rodent-shaped dent in Roscoe Village that recently became an offbeat tourist attraction was filled in with cement and, once again, dug out by devoted fans on Wednesday. <laughs> I'd heard the first part, but the second part's great. The saga began in the early morning when neighbors noticed a large splatter of wet cement over the hole in the <laughs> sidewalk. It was just a big splat of cement on top, said Gabriel Plaskak. Plaskak? 31, who lives next door. They didn't even fill in the tail. I was like, you couldn't at least smooth this out for us? But by mid-afternoon, rat hole loyalists had apparently dug the cement out of the hole. <laughs> Neighbor Emma Chesky, 25, said she saw a few people scooping it out with spoons and license plates. Spoons! <laughs> and license plates. <laughs> oh. right, wow. Yeah. So there you go, rat hole update. <laughs> uh, I like it. That's a good chaos. Force for chaos. Uh, friend of the squad, Megan... You're going to like this one. Sends this uh, this little post with some discussion. It looks like maybe from Reddit or Facebook. And it says, Today I learned that NASA has been launching jellyfish into space since the 90s. I so, heard this. Yes. Uh, many people sent this, but Megan sent it first. And so I was like, Ingo is basically NASA then because <laughs> we both eat jellyfish. Originally, 2,478 jellyfish were sent up, and there were 60,000 orbiting Earth by the mission's end 20 years later. The jellyfish that have returned reportedly, quote, hate life on Earth. <laughs> and one person comments, you want to give birth to an eldritch horror? This is how you give birth to an eldritch horror. And someone else says, I want to know how they decided that they hate life on Earth. I know. Any comment on the NASA yeeted jellyfish? I think jellyfish? it's awesome. I wonder if they had them in fish tanks or if they just like kept them, they're floating in space. I, I like the idea of them floating in just like little jelly blobs yeah, floating like around. Meteorites and jellyfish. I feel like jellyfish the vacuum belt. of space might smoosh them. I don't know. Or jellyfish, explode them. <laughs> jellyfish are really hardy. Yeah. <laughs> they're immortal. Well. I, and I love the idea that they hate life on Earth. Welcome to welcome to everyone else. Welcome to how we live, jellyfish. All right, I'm gonna. We can't all escape to space. <laughs> I'm gonna dig more into the uh, NASA jellyfish program, and uh, we'll come back next time with more updates. Apparently, there are tests to find out how uh, how jellyfish feel. I don't know <laughs> what they do. All right, can I give you like a total side note here? Uh, I don't know. Will it slow everything down? <laughs> Go I ahead. Not. Um, so a couple weeks ago, I did the Panetta lecture series out in California. Um, and so there were four of us on the panel. Um, and one of the other guys was a professor in, the, in a business school. And business school professors have a specific way of thinking <laughs> that, let's just say, is different than my way quote of thinking. Quote thinking. <laughs> and he, he was like, AI, you know, he's talking all about generative AI. So anytime he'd say AI, he he kind of meant generative AI like chat GPT and stuff. And he's like, uh, it's as creative as people. And I was like, that is literal bullshit. Like, that's not true. This is like before we're on the panel and we're chatting and he's like, well, all I can say is that like every time we test it, it does as well as people. And I was like, what are you talking about? He's like, well, you know, we had, we did this test where we like, we have an entrepreneurship class and we have students generate ideas for like businesses, like startups. 
And then we also had ChatGPT generate proposals for startups. And then we had like an independent group of venture capitalists read the proposals and rate the ones that they wanted to invest in. And like 35 out of the 40 that they picked were generated by ChatGPT. He's like, that's how we test creativity. And I was like, maybe that's a really shitty test for human creativity. Wait, so that's a bullshit generator. That's not a creative creativity. You've like, just generated that, fake bullshit. Uh, but uh, like the idea that like human creativity is best measured by like what startup ideas venture capitalists want to invest in. Like he was, you persuade people to give you money is creative. There were like four... <laughs> There were four of us on the panel, and this was the only guy that I hadn't looked up. So, like, I knew he was a professor, but that's all I knew. And he's talking, talking, and and at one point, I was like, I've heard you talking. You must be from a business school. <laughs> like, like, just going, well, like, here's the test. And so AI does well on the test, thus AI is like better, better than, than humans. humans at everything as opposed to like, huh, like maybe the way that we're measuring this is not fully capturing this thing. Um, it's creative. Yeah. So oh, jellyfish are unhappy. Maybe the test is wrong. Like, I wonder what the test is. Yeah, maybe they, you know, maybe they spit is in people's face test? when they're happy instead of we thought that meant they were unhappy with the service. Nope. That's how uh. they express happiness. All right. It's time for taste of the keys. Oh, I was being genius there. You were. Mm. That's I, not I'm what sorry. your face says. Your face says, moving on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Taste of the keys. Yay. Man masturbates after being denied entry to Sloppy Joe's, then kicks cop, P Key West police say. Oh. Would you like to look at the dude? He looks unhappy. Yeah, he, looks he looks drunk. Extremely drunk. It's a it's a booking photo of, of a the very, guy. very... He's he's sobering up. <laughs> a man dropped his pants and began masturbating after being denied entry into a popular Duval Street bar, according to police. But he's facing a felony charge after authorities accused him of subsequently battering a police officer. Police booked Trey Jacob Delaney, 28, of Wichita, Kansas, into jail just before 4.30 Thursday morning. First time in a bar? He serves Sir. in the U.S. Navy, according to an arrest report. Uh, according to the Key West Police Department, police received a call from staff at Rick's Bar at 202 Duval Street that Delaney was being, quote, aggressive and disorderly toward staff and patrons. Police say officers encountered him at the 500 block of Green Street after he was refused entry to the nearby Sloppy Joe's Bar. Good judgment, Sloppy Joe's bouncer. <laughs> Indeed. They said officers handcuffed Delaney after he pulled his pants down and began masturbating. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, my God. The arrest report states that a man inside Sloppy Joe's told officers he was shocked by the act. This is a guy who doesn't spend a lot of time in Key West. <laughs> Not that this happens all the time, but if I saw somebody do that, I'd be like, yeah, it's Key West on a I just, Thursday well, night. I think that's what the cops thought, because they didn't even charge him with that. No. Nope. If, if he hadn't kicked the cop, they probably would have been like, go home and go to sleep. Son. All right. So this guy said he was shocked. And the police wrote that Delaney's penis was, quote, exposed for everyone to see in the bar and the surrounding area on Duval Street. Ugh. And they just. I, f I picture a spotlight. Here, here's what I got to say. Oh. He was drunk. Much. Very. He was not in a sexual situation <laughs> being denied entry to Sloppy Joe's. No. So, like. How much was he actually showing to the public? Like, I don't know. I'm maybe not saying was, that he, he should do just this. Just making the jerk off motion with his hand. I mean, I believe he pulled his pants down, and I believe that like he grabbed onto his bits and was like doing stuff. But we're not talking. I wouldn't think about like pornography style masturbation on Duval Street here. We're talking about a very drunk guy. You think he was just angry and being like, you know. I'm saying he didn't have an erection is, is what I'm trying to like gently get to that you seem to nuts. not be picking up on. Huh? I mean, Oh, uh, I was picking up on it. I just didn't want to go there. <laughs> changing the subject. Fine. I mean, uh, How do who you knows? Know? The cops Maybe didn't he's say. a shower. The cops didn't no? say. Um, all right. So he showed his penis to everybody. According to police, as officers walked him to a cruiser, Delaney quote, delivered a high kick to an officer striking him on the shoulder that is a high kick whoa <laughs> with his pants still down i What's hope they pulled his here? pants up at that by that point the oh, officer was they had him handcuffed yeah they probably handcuffed him and then yanked his 
pants back on. That is a high kick. He's a gymnastic uh-huh. little guy. The officer was unhurt, and police took Delaney down, authority <laughs> said. But they just pushed him. <laughs> One little finger poke. Poke. Delaney was taken to jail. <laughs> he faced charges of battery on a law enforcement officer, resisting arrest, and exposure of sexual organs. It's just... Do we have to add codicils to the don't bite anyone? It's like, don't masturbate in front of a keep bar. Your you guys, keep your junk to yourself, you guys. Keep your junk to yourself. Don't kick cops in the shoulder. This is uh, He made many mistakes. So many. It could have ended probably peacefully. Yep. Embarrassingly. He was already past the point of embarrassment, but peacefully. Yeah. yeah. Well... Thanks, Chris, Chris Gothner of Local 10 News. He wrote that story. So. <laughs> That's a great headline, though. Man masturbates after being denied entry to sloppy joes and kicks cops. <laughs> yeah. it yes, it absolutely is. The The headline has gone sort of viral. It's a great the story. It's a great headline. Yeah. Tells the whole story. Listen. And then some. Kansans, stop sending your drunk masturbators to Key West. Send, don't send us your worst. Yeah. Keep them in Wichita. Yeah, that wouldn't or fly Lincoln, in Wichita. In Wichita. That wouldn't fly in Wichita. It's not going <laughs> to fly in Key West. Uh, it's time for German Word of the Week. Oh, yes. Yes, it is. Is this a thing we do every week? Yes. But I did tell you didn't have to do one this week. Well, I don't listen to everything you say. No, I, I'm not saying you can't. And some you things shouldn't. that are safe, like sometimes do something else. No. Yeah. You do whatever you want. What do you want to do about the German Word of the Week this week? I want to say it. Let's do it then. You can't repress me. I'm irrepressible. That is true. Unrepressible. Yeah. The it's word of the week is sturmfrei. Stormfree. It is. Yes, without storm. Yeah. Free of storm. Stormfree. Stormfree. But what you said what it means is when you are left alone at home or you are alone at home. Like you've been for the last week. Yeah. Yeah, and you and you say du hast eine sturmfreie Bude. You have a storm-free house, which means you c- you could just do whatever you please, and you're you're just like, st- it's uh, it's kind of like batching it, but it's like a positive thing, like you batching know, you're it? bacheloring, ac- oh, you know, bacheloring. living like a bachelor for mm-hmm. a while or something. Where, yep, you, yep. where it's like people say that, um, so it's a good thing, um, and it's. It's often like kids when their parents are gone or something. You mm. have a you have a storm free house, Sturm frei. which means no one's really bothering you. You can do whatever you want. Yeah, yeah. Sturm frei. It's a good one. Yeah, it's an interesting concept. It doesn't apply as much anymore, but when one was younger. Okay, it's time for Ingo Corner. Um, for those who don't want to hear the Ingo rambling, you can turn the podcast off now. But lots of people love your rambling. And now I'm not going to interrupt you. You can talk as slow as you want. You can tell whatever stories you want. You can say anything. And I'm just going to let you do it. You hate joy. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should leave again. Maybe I should take back all that stuff I said about the house being peaceful and nice. Yeah. that Your statements about that are other people's ramblings, you know. Okay. <laughs> Anyway, I'm glad you're back. For for reals, I'm glad you're back. I love all these dogs. Not that glad. Feta is growing into being a big sister quite nicely. Yeah. Uh, Zola is freaking adorable, but also, holy cow, is she chaotic. She's a digger. She's a rock eater. She's a, a runner around her. Mm-hmm. She would chew electric cables. She hasn't gotten to any recently just because she's stumpy and small but <laughs> she's a force of chaos and will have to be carefully monitored true but she's also fun and super cute and smells like good smells like a puppy she does that's it you sure thanks to everyone for your support <laughs> i go wasn't implying anything just go ahead giving you a chance no go ahead I'm going to end the podcast now unless there's more you no, want to No, I understand. I see what you're doing here. No, I'm not. No, no you're huh? trying to make me look bad. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> 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 um, all right, everyone. So this podcast is coming out early because um, GR daughter, GR dad's daughter is coming to visit next week. So I don't think we're going to podcast on Wednesday because GR dad's going to be doing actual dad stuff. Um. I'm supportive. 
Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm just saying yeah. that the our schedule has shifted a bit both, you know, last week it was shifted because we kind of took half a week off and then this week it's also shifted. I'm GR dad. I'm everyone's dad mm-hmm. all the time. You you just also have like a biological dad human stuff dadness. all the time. Yeah. Yeah. I do dad jokes. Yeah. I do dad like activities. <laughs> that you do. Yeah. I have weird dad like habits. Yes. Yes, so you do. I can't shake it. I'm I'm a dad. Yep. Okay. And you're just gonna be extra dad like this week. <laughs> I'll have a Dad-ish. different subject of dadness. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um all right, so yeah, we'll probably be back um a week from Wednesday with the next pod. So save this one. Uh, which I say at the end. <laughs> but you never know. Watch this space. Yeah, you never know. We could sneak one in there. We sure could. Especially if there's more escapos. Well, and we are uh, recording bonus pods as soon as we end this pod. So if you can't get enough of your GR fix, you can follow us on Patreon or um, subscribe on Twitter. And then you can listen to the bonus pods. Yeah. And I'm not going to get soberer for those. You sure are not. Just stating a biological physics fact. True facts. Chemical fact <laughs> uh-huh. all right everyone uh well thanks for listening and until next time slava ukraini and don't put anyone unless they ask you to and don't step out stand outside sloppy joes <laughs> with your dick out. <laughs> yes exactly bye bye, bye.